Let's talk about a circuit that we can make using a light fixture and a switch and doing it with a process we're going to call a switch leg or a switch loop. This is going to be a circuit that's going to be set up with our power cable coming into our junction box that's going to house our light fixture. This is different than another circuit that we did where the power came into our switch box. So as the power comes into our light fixture box, this junction box contains the power and it's also going to have our light fixture, but we don't want to connect it directly. That's just going to make the light be on all the time. That's not what we want. We want to be able to control that light with a switch down here, a single pole switch. So what we're going to do in a nutshell is to take this power that's coming in, run it down to our switch, then come back up and then power our light fixture with it. That process is called creating a switch leg or a switch loop. And if you pull up your schematic, we're going to go ahead and post it here and it'll be up. It will be our map that we'll follow. I'll show you how that switch leg translates to this mock-up here. So as you see in your presentation or on the map or schematic, you're going to have your power coming in. It's going to be a 14-2 wire. We're going to add another material into this exercise. It's going to be a 14-3 wire. If you remember from materials, a 14-3 wire has the same gauge conductors in it, but it adds one conductor. And not only will we have our standard white insulated conductor and our black insulated conductor, we're adding a red conductor in here as well. We're going to have our bare ground just like we do in our 14-2. So I've got 14-2 coming in and then I have a 14-3 running to our switch box. That's our setup with our cables. Also keep in mind that our power is being fed into here on our 14-2. Then we're going to route it into our box with this 14-3. So looking at this schematic a little closer, I'm going to relate it to this mock-up. So let's go through this one wire at a time. So I've got my ground, bare grounds coming in from my feed cable, and it's also this ground wire is going to have to carry out down to my switch. We're going to have a ground terminal at our switch that we have to connect to. So this is going to give us continuity down to here. We don't have a ground terminal on our light fixture so we do not need a pigtail that's going to connect to this light fixture so this will be two wires twisted together with a wire nut no pigtail moving on our typical process is then to deal with our neutrals so i have two neutrals one on my feed wire coming in and then one neutral going out code tells us that we have to have a neutral wire in every box so this uh, these two wires are going to get connected together and then my light fixture has a neutral terminal so I will need a pigtail that will connect these two wires to this terminal the sil silver terminal on my light fixture that gets our neutral taken care of in this box when it comes down to this box I've got a neutral here but if you remember our single pole switch has no association with any neutral wires. So all we'll do here is to, we, we clip the end of this neutral wire, we're just gonna cap it off. That gives us our, our neutral wire in this particular box and keeps us legal as far as electrical code goes. From our neutral, we can then work with our black wires or our hot wires. So I've got my live hot wire coming in here. That's my power. I don't need to connect that to my light fixture yet. What this needs to do is to carry, together with this black wire, it's going to carry the power into my switch box. That is the only connection we need to make, is this hot wire to this hot wire. That's going to feed live electricity to my switch. That will get connected to one of my terminals at my switch. And then it's going to carry, by the red wire, it's going to carry through the other terminal back to my light. When this red wire gets energized when you turn on the switch, it's going to give power to my light fixture here, and that one's going to connect to my gold terminal on my light fixture. So with all of those connected, we've got a nice working circuit that has a switch leg on it. Let's go ahead and do this.
I'm gonna start with my ground wires. I'm gonna work this box first, which is my light fixture. So I'm going to twist my grounds together. And there's only two. I don't need my pigtail because I don't have a ground terminal on this specific light fixture. So once they're twisted together, I'm going to go ahead, clip them off clean. And now I can twist on my wire nut. Grounds are taken care of. Next up, I need my neutrals connected. and I'm going to use a pigtail connected to them that will then connect to my light fixture. So this is a three wire connection. And these will get twisted together nice and tight. We'll clip them off at the ends. And now we can put our wire nut on. So that takes care of my neutral connection. Make sure you get this twisted on super tight. And make sure that you start to see these insulated jackets winding together. That's going to tell me I have a good solid connection. Now I have a, a, a bent hook on the end of this that will go to, if you remember, our silver terminal is the one that we're going to always connect to our white wire. So I'll go ahead and hook that on there. And we're going to tighten that up. And we want our hook turned in a clockwise direction because that's the way we're tightening our terminal. Give it a tug to check it. So now we need to work on, we need to pass our live feed through the box to our switch. We're going to connect these two black wires together. So once we get these done, we can cap those off with a wire nut. And now we have one more wire to connect in this box. I'm connecting this wire out of sequence if we're talking about the path of the electricity. I have this wire here, which we know is going to come from our switch with power. Since I'm already working in this box, I'm going to go ahead and connect that wire to my terminal. My red wire is the one that's carrying my current back from my switch leg. So we're going to think of our red wire as if it was a black wire. It's a live wire that is going to carry our current. So we'll go ahead and connect that one here. And once we've got that tight, we are completely finished with all of the associated wiring to make the circuit work in our light fixture junction box. We can pack these wires up. I'm going to start with my ground and I'm going to push it to the back to make sure it's not touching any of my terminals or wires. I'll then work my neutral in. And you can kind of work these in and around each other. And then I have my black wire I'm going to fold in here. Now I can set my box in, I mean my fixture in my box. And so that is my light fixture. So I'm ready to move on to my next box, which is going to have my single pole switch in it. So our, we're going to start with our ground. I have one ground wire and I have a ground or green terminal on my switch. So this connection is an easy and logical one to make. We're going to go ahead and tighten this ground terminal onto that bare copper wire. First connection done, we're moving on to our neutral. This is where our neutral has no connection to our switch. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cap it off. And I, I'm not even going to strip the end because it's just going to get a cover of a wire nut over it. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that wire nut over my neutral wire. That wire is done. This will just get packed in the box, not unlike our ground that we put up here that we didn't use. And now I have two terminals on this side and I have two 
uh, two conductors that need to connect one to each terminal. It doesn't matter on a single pole switch which terminal goes to which wire. So I'm just going to use, the, uh, I'm going to try to keep the wires from crossing each other and connect them in the most convenient way. And my black wire is getting connected. That one's nice and tight. Now I'm going to connect my red wire. So a quick review of what, what we just did. We've got our live wires coming in from here. It's a 14-2. Got a black and a white and a ground coming into here. My black wire is carrying power into this box, but we're bypassing this box and bringing that power down to this switch. The red wire is then bringing that live wire or that live power. When I turn the switch on, this is bridging these two terminals. The power is carrying then through the red wire back up and that's what powers my light. So this is what a switch leg is, is a way to remotely turn the power on and off. We're bringing the power into this box and then we're, we're using this remote box to, for the power to travel to, to then get switched on and off and then back to this box. That's a switch loop or a switch leg. We can go ahead and pack these wires into this box. All of these wires are connected to this device. I'm going to go ahead and pack my loose wire in first. So this uh, neutral is going to get pushed to the back and there's no chance with this wire nut on the end of this neutral wire coming in contact with any of these uh, live terminals. Now I can turn my switch the right direction so that when I turn it up, it says on. When I turn it down, it says off. I want to fold my wires in, keeping my ground wire off to the left so it doesn't interfere with my connections here. I'm going to fold my red and my black conductors in. I'm going to line up my screws and then I'm going to tighten this device up. So I've, I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to mount this device completely. I just have it in place for now. But as you see here, we have done a variation of another circuit that we built, but we've reversed the way the power comes into the circuit. There are a lot of variations you can do in electrical to get the same job done. And it is the, the job of the electrician to understand the path of the electricity and all of the rules and all of the parts that need to come together to make this circuit work well. So I hope this makes sense and good luck with this exercise when you go, if you go do this in an actual skills exercise and I'll see you in the next lesson.